Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to your very own Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel. I'm your biology expert Aishwarya and in this particular class we are going to be doing a mega menti quiz for the full biology syllabus for class 9. So as you know as a part of Crash Course 2.0 we will be recalling all the important topics. We are going to be having an interesting menti quiz today and we will be having a total of 15 questions which we are going to be discussing and we see that we're going to be having it in five rounds all right so we're going to be having all objective questions but we're going to have lots of interesting questions and in every round I'll tell you what kind of questions you can expect so everyone I hope all of you are excited for today's class and as you know it's a menti quiz so please go to www.menti.com and type in the code double six seven nine five six three one I'm writing it down as well the code is double six seven nine five six three one and very quickly everybody please make sure you go ahead and share this video with all of your friends do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button and of course everyone as I know I was a minute or two late of course as you know we do face technical difficulties now that we intentionally want to be late so I would apologize for that and of course with your support we will make this class super amazing and what is our intent our intent is that by end of today the three important chapters that are there which is fundamental unit of life, tissues and improvement in food resources, you guys will become masters. So hello to everybody here and before we get started, I hope my audio, my video and my screen and what I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is, can you give me a quick thumbs up and a Josh level check in the chat? Yes? All right. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Tanishka. Thank you so much. Ranjit, can we increase the font size? The code is on the screen, but Cha Chaitanya code I have put on the screen. Double six seven nine five six three one. Yes, all right. Okay. How many questions? There are going to be 50 questions today, and it's going to be in five rounds. Okay, amazing. Yes, all right. Good evening, Kiran, Shiva, uh, Shivin, Uday. Tanmoy, Lakshit, so many of you are here. Yes. Hi Sahil. Hello. Hello. Yes. So we're going to get started. I'm doing amazing. I hope all of you are excited today too. Now see, I want you to, I will tell you a few simple rules about today's quiz, right? Yes, I'm going to start. I'm going to give, a, give everyone one more minute of time to join the quiz, right? So here, it's a few things that I need to tell you. First and foremost, try not to mislead everybody in the chat because see, today is not about any competition, right? Today is mainly about knowing and understanding how much we have learnt and studied because our final exams are close by. Secondly, I know that some of you have this tendency to rush saying, ma'am, next, next, pass, pass, pass. But if there are a lot of students who are stuck with a particular question, let's be mindful, let's be helpful with the others and let's let's give that time to our other friends who need help with that question yes so do you all agree with me that today we are going to be helpful we are going to be mindful and we are going to be learning today yes can you give me a quick thumbs up as well for the chat yes Shivanshu yes Soumya okay hello Neil Kamal okay all right Ma'am, final exams are done. For those of you for whom final exams are done, I hope you've done a good job, right? And I hope all of you, right, all of you today, please make sure that if your exams are coming up, today, this class is going to be the ultimate revision you could be a part of, right? All right. So everybody, quickly make sure you share this video with all of your friends. We need to have at least 300 live watching today. So let's go ahead and let's get started, right? All right. So let's quickly move on. I hope all of you have hit the like button. I hope all of you have subscribed to our channel also because as you know in 9 and 10 we take your exam preparation very seriously. So everyone we are going to get started. Anyone from 10th year, 10th standard students as long as you are here it's okay but I also hope you are studying for your board exams. Okay. Ma'am 15th of Feb is science exam then this will be very helpful for all of you. Right. All right. Okay. How many questions are there? There are going to be a total of 15 questions and let's get started with round one. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready? We're going to move on to round one. Okay. And in round one, you will have a total of 10 questions after which you will see the leaderboard. Okay. Leaderboard will come after 10th question. 
all right and of course we see that in this particular round you will have simple objective questions okay so you will have very simple objective questions and you will have 30 seconds to answer this all right so we are going to get started with the first question okay yes i will give you time naam likhne ka time aap sabhi ko milega to take your time write your names and we'll get started all right okay yes you can write your names very quickly i can see over 168 students are here very quickly i hope all of you have hit the like button for this video as well right very very important hello everybody hello someone just like mama i'm a burger i'm not able to find the burger see i'm very bad at this game okay like it it takes me so long to spot something on screen i you have no idea i'm very bad at spotting things all right okay so shall we get started question number 1 on your screens now so let me move on and let's have the question on screen okay very simple and easy question okay so question number 1 which among the following is a oil yielding plant among the following so is it lentil sunflower cauliflower or hibiscus so very similar question which you would observe in your ncrt exemplar right very similar but from which among these will we get oil right focus on giving the answer don't give misleading answers right be mindful to your friends and be nice to all of your friends so less than 10 seconds left and time will be up Yes, very good, everybody. Very good. The correct answer is option B, sunflower, because we know that from sunflower seeds we get oil. But lentil, especially cauliflower and hibiscus, of course not. And lentils, of course, normally are pulses, right? So we see that they come under that category. So very simple and easy question. Now moving on to question number two. All right. So let's move on to question number two on your screens now. Okay. In dash. A dash in human blood is an example of a single cell which can change its shape. So we are talking about a certain something in the human blood which has the ability to change its shape. So is it RBC, WBC, is it platelets, or is it none of the above? Very easy question. Component of blood that has the ability to change its shape. Ten seconds left, everybody. Take your time and answer. Now this change in shape helps it squeeze through the walls of the capillaries. Okay, all right. I can see majority of you got it right. Some of you don't know the answer. Some of you are like, "Ma'am, I got confused." Okay, not a problem. See, when you talk about RBCs, right? What do RBCs have? What is the shape of the cell? We know that different cells in our body come in different shapes and sizes. And why do they come in different shapes and sizes? So that they can perform certain functions. Now, when you talk about RBCs, we know that RBCs are disc shaped, right? So we know that they are disc shaped or they are biconcave, and this shape helps in accommodating more number of RBCs because at the end of the day, RBCs are necessary, right? They are necessary for the transport of oxygen. Now, on the other hand, when we talk about WBCs, we know that WBCs have an irregular shape, or we often say that they have a amoeboid shape. Now, why do they have an amoeboid shape? Because at the end of the day, we know that WBCs are there for defense, right? And we know that they need to rush to wherever some pathogen or some unwanted particle enters. So, in order to do that, they need to be able to squeeze. through the walls of the capillaries so in order to squeeze through the walls of the capillaries wbcs have an amoeboid shape right which is why they are able to change its shape amoeba is able to change its shape right which is why this is the correct answer surbi this is what i was telling you don't rush to go to the next question because like i said our friends require some help let's be mindful of that okay and map session will come soon tanish please don't spam on the chat all right So now let's move on to the next one. All right, let's move on to the next question. Question number three. All right, question number three. So that previous question was from fundamental unit of life, and I'm sure that in the initial chapter, if you've gone through your NCERT thoroughly, you will be able to find it. So question number three, everyone, on your screen now. Okay, which among the following are connective tissues? Okay, you have four options from which you need to identify which among them are connective tissues. you have ligament tendon blood all of the above 
गाइज वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन ओके वेरी सिंपल वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन very good everybody very good see they are not saying fluid connective tissue fibrous connective they are not saying anything in specific they have asked you specifically what is connective tissue in general now what among the following is connective ligament is connective right so ligament is a connective tissue tendon is also a connective tissue and these two are fibrous connective tissues then you have blood which is a fluid connective tissue leaving you with what leaving you with the fact that all three are connective tissues so the correct answer here is option d now for those of you for whom menti is stuck please go ahead and refresh menti page for those of you whose screen is blur please go ahead go to settings and change the font there right and for those of you who are here right make sure that you go to www ignore go to www.menti.com and type the code 6679 5631 garima please avoid using languages like that okay yes all right so shall we move on to the next question okay moving on to question number 4 so simple mcq questions are going to be there and then we'll move on to the next set of question so question number 4 on your screens now okay tissues are composed the tissues which are composed of living thin walled polygonal cells are what so you have collenchyma parenchyma sclerenchyma and you have striated muscle This is not a easy one, but it's a simple one. Okay, it's very simple. Your clues are living, thin-walled, polygonal cell. Thank you, Arav. How sweet. Yes. Very good, everybody. Very good. I'm actually very happy that a lot of you did not get confused with this particular question, right? Because see, when you say living cells. your sclerenchyma will get eliminated because sclerenchyma is made up of dead cells so gone then you have thin walled and polygonal now here when you say thin walled that means it has cell wall now in this case striated muscle is an animal cell which means there will be no cell wall right and on the other hand when you look at it we have collenchyma parenchyma but collenchyma have irregularly thickened cell wall right so we see that there are thickenings in the corners right but when you talk about parenchyma they are living they have polygonal or maybe oval cells and they are thin wall which is why the correct answer here is option b right so the correct answer here is option b lead board will come after 10 questions all right okay moving on to question number 5 everybody very quickly on your screens now right so quickly question number 5 let's see dash is a non living rigid layer found in cells okay is it plasma membrane nuclear membrane cell membrane cell wall yes mam plants which don't have cell wall is called as what see plants cells which don't have cell wall we see that see there are various cells because you have different categories of it but most often they're not your animal cells come have no cell wall right but specifically we don't say that there is a specific term per se yes okay how sweet ek note how sweet this is very easy we just discussed about it it is cell wall right cell wall is a non living structure right and we see that specifically cell wall that is there in plant cells it's there in bacterial cells and we know that even in fungal cells we have cell wall just that composition of cell wall is quite different so easy question now moving on to question number 6 yes easy peasy questions round 1 is very easy you will go around 2 3 you'll have lots of amazing beautiful questions that the team has made So yes moving on to question number 6 all right dash is not found in xylem tissue okay let's see see sieve tube xylem parenchyma tracheids or vessels which among the following is not found in xylem tissue very easy question you all should be able to answer this how to join quiz go to www.menti.com and type in the code that is there on top i'm writing it for you once again 
Easy question guys, very easy. I know all of you know the answer to this. Exactly. Now for everyone out there who gave me this answer. Rest of you who told me xylem, parenchyma, tracheids and vessels. I am hoping that this is a misclick. Okay. Yes, this is my hoping that this would be a misclick. Now of course for everybody, for all of you to understand. Right. It is not found. That means you need to be able to understand what is found in xylem. Now, can you tell me sieve tubes are found where? Is it found in xylem or will it, is it found in phloem? Is sieve tube found in xylem or phloem? In the chat, can you tell me? I need the answer to come very quickly. Yes? Hello, Dikshita. Okay. Exactly. Sieve tube is found in phloem, right? And we know that sieve tubes are made up of many sieve cells that form a continuous structure for the transport of food and other for especially food materials, right? But xylem parenchyma, xylem fibers, tracheids and vessels, especially tracheids and vessels are necessary for the transport of water and minerals, which is an important function of xylem tissue, which is why in this case, the correct answer here is option A, sieve tube. So read the question very clearly, okay? Read the question very clearly. Now moving on to question number seven on your screens very quickly, all right? Question number seven. So you have two statements which are given to you. Statement one says that hybridization refers to the crossing between genetically dissimilar plants. Statement two says that this crossing can be intervarietal, interspecific or intergeneric. Identify which amongst the statements are correct. How sweet Tanesh, very sweet of you, very very sweet of you. This is on hybridization, which is a very important topic from improvement in food resources. And I keep stressing on the definition of hybridization also because I told you that these kind of questions can come. Well done, everybody. Well done. Vaishnavi, no problem, bacha. Misclicks happen. That's normal, right? It happens to all of us, right? So what is statement one? Statement one says that hybridization is a crossing of genetically dissimilar plants. Now everybody out there in that particular definition, can you tell me what is the key word? What is the key word that you have to have to write when you're writing the answer? Yes, what is the key word that you have to write? Abdul Sagar Ko, you ask him later. Now you pay attention in class, okay? Ayush from Telegram channel, right? From the Telegram channel, you will be able to get it. Himanshi says genetically dissimilar. Exactly. Somebody is telling ma'am crossing. Someone is telling crossbreeding. Phenotyp. I can see some 10th grade students are here giving me some heredity ka answer. Yes, very good. For those of you who have watched Improvement in Food Resources one shot and you've gone back and watched it, I'm sure that you're able to get the answer. The key word for hybridization is that we are making or we are crossing genetically dissimilar plants, right? And this genetic dissimilarity could be either intervarietal, it could be interspecific or it could be intergeneric, right? So the correct answer here is that both statements are correct, okay? Well done, everybody. Well done. <coughs> Now we'll move on to the next one, which is question number eight. I'm very proud, Poonam, that you're getting all the answers correctly. Very proud of everybody for doing so well in the quiz, right? I'm very proud of all of you. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question, question number eight. The technique of growing two or more different crops in the same field is called as what? Mixed cropping, mixed farming, intercropping, crop rotation. This is a tricky one. I will say this is where you can get confused. Two or more different crops on the same piece of land. Well done everybody. Well done. I am so proud of all of you that you did not get confused with this. Now. Let me ask you all the question. If this is mixed cropping, right? What is intercropping? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what is intercropping? Ma'am, ye to galat baat hai. Kya hua pranya? What happened? Yes. Black boy, please pay attention in class. 
very good exactly very good so proud of you if simultaneously exactly himanshi one thing i'll agree with you and i give it to you that if simultaneously is there then okay but main thing is a definite pattern right so if there is a definite pattern where either in rows or maybe in columns it is grown that will be intercropping then what is mixed farming farming again like i told you right farming is the practice of doing it okay mixed farming is slightly different and we know that it is not crop rotation right so this is the correct answer mixed cropping is it okay all right stop spamming or access free black boy so please go ahead and stay focused and yes aryan note it so now of course we'll move on to question number 9 all right so question number 9 on your screens now okay the proteins and lipids are essential for building the cell membrane that which are manufactured by whom endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus plasma membrane mitochondria see all of you here should be able to get this answer correctly if i at least 200 odd students are here in this class all of you should be able to get this answer very easy question proteins and lipids who is responsible for synthesis of proteins and lipids that is the question they have twisted it and asked you don't get confused i am seeing some wrong answers also lipid is fat ma'am yes you can say that guys question was twisted some of you got it wrong here what is mitochondria what does mitochondria do you guys tell me in the chat right okay mitochondria what is the function of mitochondria very quickly yes power house exactly so this is the power house of the cell that means this is responsible for the production of energy and we know that plasma membrane that is there is the boundary that allows for selective you know movement of substances what is the function of golgi apparatus now all of you tell me this what is the function of golgi apparatus yes function of golgi golgi is transport packaging yes exactly packers and movers yes for golgi is our postman right so we see that this is mainly there for packaging of substances right and then of course we have the endoplasmic reticulum now you have rer and you have scr right so the rer that is there is of course called as so because it has the ribosomes on it and this of course manufactures proteins and you have scr that is there which manufactures the lipids right Right? which is why in this case we see that the correct answer is option a very simple now for those of you who got the other answers wrong i hope all of you are clear now moving on to the last question of round 1 before we see our first leaderboard let's see what the question is okay which among the following statement is incorrect with respect to cell division i will stress on this because you all make mistakes here right all of you make mistakes in this one particular aspect you will read correct as incorrect so which is why i am doing this for all of you <coughs> see guys for those of you who got confused here see i do understand that in your textbook cell division is one chore to chapter which will be mentioned for all of you right it's a very small topic that is mentioned but in this case none of these concepts are beyond what is asked there what is the first one there are two types of division that is mitosis and meiosis this statement is correct right uday please kindly bachcha try not to spam on the chat right please stay attention please pay attention then of course you have two main types of cells that is mitosis and we have meiosis then of course this statement is correct right then of course we see that the statement number c that is there says that meiosis is a type of cell division which involves two consecutive which means that there is meiosis 1 and there is meiosis 2 it happens twice then what does it say new cells are needed or why is cell division needed for replacing old and dead cells and for formation of gamete so in this case this is also true right and see even if it is not there it's 
it's not very complicated information right it's something that we all know and last but not the least what is incorrect in mitosis daughter cells have half the number of chromosomes that is not the case right so in this case as you as you see right in the case of mitosis we see that they have equal number it is equational division right so that is something that you need to understand very very important so this statement b is incorrect so are we all clear with this are we all clear so in the case of crash course for sst we will be having it more in terms of quizzes okay so tomorrow there will be a quiz all right amazing guys amazing yes by, by fission process yes in not in plants but in bacteria okay it's okay sakshi no problem at all so now of course let's quickly move on right so let's quick let's quickly move on to see our first leaderboard all my 10 standard students out here asking me questions about heredity guys don't worry okay we will be doing the quiz Okay, so I can see Himanshi is the fastest and is on top, followed by Shrishti, Vaibhav, Jashnur. I can see Sarang, Raj, Tracy, Apshita, Chimi, and Mehek. So well done, all of you. Well done. Okay, so you can quickly tell me what your scores are after this, right? Yes, improvement ka questions are also here in this. Don't worry. Okay, 70th, 27th, 19th, no problem. Well done, well done. Keep it going. We still have 40 more questions to finish. And hopefully in the next one and a half hours, we should be able to wind up all our 40 questions. Okay? Yes, very good everyone. Very good. Okay, so before I go ahead, of course, very quickly, I need you to see, okay, before I go ahead with round two. So in round two, if you see, we are going to be doing assertion reason questions now how many of you get very scared right how many of you get scared seeing assertion reason questions yes nishant you are correct right you are correct yes mommy okay before i go ahead and tell you right i mean of course at the end of it i know why you get scared but i want you guys to tell me for those of you who get scared looking at assertion reason no can you tell me what is the problem that you face it is tricky. What exactly is it that you don't understand about assertion reason? For those of you who are saying, ma'am, no, very good, right? I don't like it. Oh, ho, it's tricky. Find confusion between A and B you are not able to understand. It's hard. So basically, how many of you feel like, ma'am, I don't know how to understand if the reason is the correct explanation or not. Exactly. Ankit is like, ma'am, everything sounds similar. So today we are going to have the next 10 questions are going to be assertion reason and you will have about 45 to 60 seconds to solve this question. Okay, so we're going to do 10 of it and I'm going to tell you how to plan and how to approach such questions, right? So of course, before I go ahead with it, I hope that we have a good number of likes on this video. I can see around 200 live watching, but lots of nine Safi that only 120 likes are there. So very quickly, everybody hit the like button and tell me that mom, we've hit the like button so that I can go ahead and we can get started with round two. Yes, I need to have at least one 200 likes before we get started yes yes hello puna i mean aryan we're definitely going to you know tackle that as well now everyone let me tell you one thing i know a lot of parallel conversations are happening but i sincerely request all of you to stay focused right stay focused in class because this is going to help you so that you missed about 10 questions already so it's okay we have another 40 more questions to go and let me have a look. Amazing, 172 likes, but I think we can make it better. 180 ko to we can definitely touch, right? Let me refresh my phone once again. Thoda thoda, ma'am, shall we start? Definitely, bacha, we are going to start soon. Don't worry. Okay, amazing. All right, so let's get started, everyone. Keep that likes going. Abhinav, I finished 10 questions, but don't worry. 10th ka menti ho gaya bacha. on Tuesday itself, Ankita Mama had taken it. You can go and you can check that out, right? Ankita Mama has already done it. All right, so let's have a look at question number 11. Assertion reason ahead, yes. 
एग्जाम का डर है कोई नहीं भाई जूस है आपके साथ जस्ट गो अड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल विल बी देर फॉर यू टू हेल्प यू आउट विथ योर एग्जाम प्रेप सो डोंट वरी अक्रॉस सब्जेक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू हेल्प यू आउट सो जस्ट स्टे सब्सक्राइब यस ओके मैम स्कोर रीस्टार्ट होगा नहीं नहीं स्कोर विल नॉट रीस्टार्ट इट विल कंटिन्यू ओके मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन एसर्शन रीजन क्वेश्चन so assertion a says that continuous use of fertilizers in an area can destroy soil fertility reason is the organic matter in the soil is not replenished and microorganisms in the soil are harmed by fertilizers used now you do this question one question by yourself and then i'll tell you the trick to do assertion reason okay and then i'll tell you the next nine questions you guys are going to ace it okay and for those of you who are giving me the answers i want you all to tell me what is the approach you have used right how did you think about solving it you have good amount of time aram se solve this there's no hurry to you know give the answer very good everybody very good exactly so in this case right After telling assertion, yes, very good. Dork, I mean, bacha, whoever that is, please stop spamming and unnecessarily, you know, spreading negative comments in the chat. Right? I always feel like our community, especially our class, should be filled with positivity and good and mindfulness. So let's keep that going. Yes, all right, very good. So basically, you have an assertion reason that says that continuous use of fertilizers in an area can destroy soil fertility. Now, normally, what I do is after the assertion statement, I add a question which says why, right? Now, if my reason statement is the answer to my why question, so if I say continuous use of fertilizers in an area can destroy the fertility, why? Because the organic matter in the soil will not get replenished and microorganisms will get harmed. So, if that is the case, then your reason is the correct explanation, right? But if they say that if it does not answer your why question, imagine if the reason statement was fertilizers are made of inorganic substances. It is not the reason to your why question, right? So that is why in this case the correct answer is option A. Um, whoever is hazardous, who is a very big One Piece fan, please stay focused in class. Okay, don't spam on the chat. Okay. So are we all clear? Are we all clear with this? Yes. are we clear on how to approach this particular question yes now you know right aapne answer to nahi diya ye to correct hai so in this case both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation for a because over consumption or over utilization of fertilizers what will happen they will affect or they will cause chemical imbalance right so when they cause chemical imbalance then it can affect the soil fertility the the you know organic matter that is there all of that can get affected so this is why the correct answer is option a now moving on to the next one all right let's move on to question number 12 use this particular approach as well okay yes uh, shala shireen you might miss the poll but you can watch it for the questions that will definitely help you out okay it's okay i understand you have to prepare for your math boards now a says that compost is formed after decay of vegetable matter and organic refuse green manure is prepared by plowing back any green plants into soil this is a tough question i will agree this is tough but think about it think about it right i told you what is the technique that you have to use yes use that particular technique and you can go ahead Very good, everybody. Very good. I can see a lot of answers. Yes, Madhuri. I can see. Okay. Well, well done, all of you. Well done. Now, for some of you who are still getting a hang of how to apply and how to solve assertion reason, in case if you guys are making some mistakes here and there, it's okay because this is how you learn, right? 
Now, compost is formed after decay of vegetable matter and organic refuse. This is true because normally how do we do composting? We take a piece of land, we dig a hole, then we put all of these substances in it, like especially um, vegetable peels, dead and decaying matter. And then we go ahead and then we see that the process of decomposition takes place and we get compost. But how is this different from green manure? First and foremost, green manure is what we get from plants, right? Now, these plants can be, you know, plowed back or they can be put back into the soil so that they can improve the soil fertility, right? So, that is one thing that you need to do. So, in this case, we see that this statement is true. But compost after is formed after decay of vegetable matter and organic refuse. Why? Green manure is prepared. Makes no sense, right? It absolutely makes no sense. That means this is not the reason for the assertion. But both the statements are true, which is why the correct answer is option B. That both A and R are true, but R is not the correct explanation for A, right? So that is something that you need to know. Yes, all right. Uh, yes, Nishant, yes, that you are correct. Now moving on to the next one. Naman, I am not able to understand. Don't worry, Bacha, we'll move on to the next question. You will get a hang of it. So question number 13, everybody on your screens now, okay? Lipids play an important role in cell functioning. RER helps in the manufacture of lipid molecules. This is very easy. Very simple, very easy question. I am sure that you don't need to worry about it. I am sure all of you know this particular answer. Take your time. You have at least 45 to 60 seconds to answer this question. Nobody is in a hurry. This is not some competition. This is not something where you need to run and get the answer. But in this case, this is for all of you to learn. Okay, all right. Ma'am, when you say it. <laughs> okay, guys, now everybody, how many of you got confused here? I want you all to give me the answer very honestly. How many of you got confused here? I want you to tell me very honestly, ma'am, I don't know, or it was a misclick. It was, it was, I don't know, it was not in my hands. I think I made a mistake, right? Okay. Ma'am, not me. Ha, no. Confused ma'am, okay. See, some of our friends on the live are confused, which is why I'm going to take one minute of time to explain to our friends as to why they got confused. See, lipids play an important role. What are lipids? They're nothing but fats which are synthesized, right? And we know that lipids are necessary because especially if you look at the plasma membrane, there's some amount. Phospholipid is there in plasma membrane itself. So that is lipid, right? So at the end of the day, we see that they play an important role in cell functioning because at the end of the day, for the cell to be formed also, that's part of cell functioning, right? Now they're saying RER helps in the manufacture of lipid molecules. See, lipid is there. This is true. Okay, assertion is true. But they're saying RER helps in manufacture. Does RER help? It will be SCR, right? SCR helps in the functioning. Now, then again, the question will be, if the question was SER, okay, if SER helps in manufacture of lipid molecules, do you think that the why question would be justified? If we say assertion says lipids play an important role in cell functioning. Reason being that SER helps in the manufacture of lipid molecules. Is this the explanation? Is this the reason for the assertion? Very good. No, it is not. But at the same time, if it was the reverse, if it says SER was, it manufactured lipid molecules. Why should it manufacture lipid molecules? Because they play an important role in cell functioning. If it was the reverse, then it will be correct. Okay, it's the correct explanation. But here it is on the other way. Paradox, Nandini wants to pay attention in class and so should you. Okay, and I hope you are clear with this. What is SCR? SCR is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So are we all clear? What is smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Necessary for the production of lipids. What is the function of RER, that is rough endoplasmic reticulum, mainly it is for the production of proteins. So that is something that happens. Okay, 
Now, for those of you who are very new to my class, just joining my class, I hope you are enjoying it. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel because by Juice is where you get quality education. Nowhere else will you get such amazing classes, such amazing questions, and amazing techniques to solve questions as well. Um, screen gets smaller and misclick. So yes, I understand. If the screen is smaller, take your time to solve. Okay, take your time. I am not in a hurry. Neither are you guys in a hurry. Okay, moving on to the next one, which is on intercropping. Intercropping checks the population of insects. Reason being that plant pests can be controlled biologically by their natural parasites and pathogens. Now these are statements which are picked off NCRT. So this is going to be something that you need to pay attention to. Very easy question, everybody. Very simple question. My assertion makes no okay. Everybody's like, my assertion doesn't make sense. But see, if you read about it, right? So if you look at your NCRT, why is intercropping practiced? How many of you know? Everybody knows, ma'am. I know what is intercropping. But why is intercropping practice? What is the reason behind going to intercropping practice? Because it keeps a check on population of insects, right? And we know that in general, plant pests. What are pests? They're nothing but small unwanted insects that are there. Yes, they can be controlled biologically by natural parasites. But does it justify why intercropping is done? No, right? Which is why these two statements are correct. But the reason is not the correct explanation for assertion. For those of you who said, "Ma'am, I have not read about advantages of intercropping," right? So that is something that is there. So I hope all of you have paid attention to this. Okay? Yes. How is it true? Shocked with the answer. <laughs> So basically what happens, we know that when we do, so let me tell you, why do we practice intercropping where we have definite patterns of it? Because normally what happens is that I, most often than not, when you cram and you grow, right? Sometimes the pests can eat up. So if it is only one kind of crop and there are pests which will attack only one kind of crop, right? And it will spoil a large area of crops. But on practicing intercropping, it actually breaks that pattern and keeps a check on the population of inter. It keeps a check on the in insects as well, which is why the correct answer is option B. So now, of course, everybody make a make a note of it. It's there in your textbook. Okay, it makes no sense, but it's there in your textbook. So go ahead and check it out. And now, of course, we'll move on to question number sixteen. Yes, question number sixteen, everybody. The cell theory stated by Schleiden and Schwann was later modified by Rudolf Virchow. Reason being that cells do not arise from pre-existing cells. All of you should be able to get this answer. Again, read cells do not arise from pre-existing cells. I cannot sing more, I cannot stress more on this. Yes, Tanishka, I can say that it's too easy. Yes, reason does not make any sense, right? It was do not. Exactly, that's what I was stressing. I know all of you read. Everybody's like, ma'am, Rudolf Virchow, huh? he said cells arise from pre-existing cells. Everybody has gotten excited about it. But how many of you misread it and saw that cells do not arise, right? It That doesn't make sense, right? Because as per Rudolf Virchow, cells arise from pre-existing cells, right? Which is why statement A is correct. That initially cell theory was proposed by Scleden and Schwann. And later on, we see here that it was modified or there was an addition made by Rudolf Virchow. But at the same time, if you think about it, this statement is incorrect, which is why we see that the answer is option C. All right. Okay. Intelligent boy, I understand there were some uh, technical difficulties from our end. We are not ignoring you, but we will be taking up all the important classes for you. Okay. Don't worry about it. Yes. So are we clear with this? 
So shall we move on? Shall we move on to the next one? It's called cell biology, right? Cell biology is the study of cells. Basically, the physiology that is there. Okay, all right. So moving on to question number 16. Okay, question number 16 on your screens. Assertion says that epidermal cells of roots commonly bear long hair-like structures. Reason being that they increase the surface area for absorption of water. So here we are talking about epidermal cells or the epidermis is specifically in the roots and how they have long hair-like structures. Now add a Y to it and see if the reason justifies it. Yes? Advika, feel confident about the answer, right? Please feel confident about the answer that you are going to give. Okay, I can see a lot of answers coming my way and I can see most of you have got the answer correctly only. Well done everybody, well done. So when you talk about epidermis, right? We know that epidermis is a kind of protective tissue that is there, which is there in the plant. We find it on the leaves, we find it on the roots also. But now when you talk about the roots, we see that the epidermal cells will project themselves to form these hair-like structures, right? And now we see that these hair-like structures that are there, they are, or why is it that they are hair-like structures? So that they increase the surface area for absorption of water. Right? So in this case, the assertion and reason is true and it justifies your why also. Why are they long and hair-like? Because they increase the surface area for absorption. So correct answer here is option A. Very simple and easy question. Now moving on to the next one. Right? Let's move on to the next question. See everyone, I keep telling you, I keep telling you that and whenever there's do not, incorrect, all of that, I go ahead and I stress on it, right? Okay, moving on to the next one. Assertion says that complex permanent tissues are made up of the same kind of permanent plant cells. Reason being that xylem, xylem and phloem are examples of complex permanent tissue. Very simple and easy. Yes, Risha, we will be doing that. My menti screen is getting smaller. Is that so? Ranjit, can we check the menti screen once? No, not ours in the platform. Yes, Ranjit sir is checking it. So don't worry guys, till then we'll be sorting it out. Okay, till then you guys go ahead. Okay, Kartike, no problem. I think I'm done about with 17 questions. So it's okay. We have a few more to go. Yes, Ego Flash, this is Menti. Who's telling a lie? I'm not telling... I'm not telling any lie here. I think I misread. I mean, I pulled that out of context. Sorry, guys. Okay. I can see most of you have got confused. For those of you who told me assertion is true. True. Sorry. Complex permanent tissues are made of the same kind of permanent plant cells. Is this statement true or false? First, I want you to tell me. Tell me that. True or false? Yes? Is it true or false? Okay, now everybody is telling me, ma'am, it's false. Hai. Now tell me, why is it false? Why is this false? Can you tell me, why is the statement false? How do we define complex permanent tissue? Exactly. So how do we define complex permanent tissue? Complex permanent tissue gets its name complex in the first place because they are made up of different kinds of cells. So your xylem and phloem are examples and if you look at the composition of xylem, they are made up of not one kind of cell. Unlike your parenchyma which is made up of the same kind of cell, your xylem is made up of tracheids, it is made up of vessels, then we also see that it is made up of xylem, you know, parenchyma and of course xylem fibers. So it's made up of four different kinds of cells. So in this case, if you see the correct, uh, this statement in itself is false, right? But at the same time, when you look at it, reason says that xylem and phloem are examples. This is also true, which is why in this case, the correct answer is option D, right? So this is the correct answer. Now moving on to the next question, okay? All right, NSK, what is the problem? Rather than spreading negative comments, you tell me what is the issue, right? 
Okay, moving on to question number 18. Yes, yes, Dinesh, what happened? 18 says that we have again an assertion reason. A says that in a cell, lysosomes help in the destruction of organelles that don't function properly, right? At the same time, reason is lysosomes contain hydrolytic enzymes. Yes? Okay. To everybody in the chat, don't get disturbed. Just pay attention. Stay focused. You don't worry about the noise that happens around, right? Okay. Good, no? Guys, Menti is good to go. I think that probably maybe you're using it in your phone and that's why it looks small. So don't worry about it. Very good, everybody. Very good. The correct answer is option A. So now in a cell, lysosomes that are there are often known as the suicide bags of the cell that help in the destruction of organelles that do not function properly, right? Why? Because they contain hydrolytic enzymes that enable them to get rid of it, right? So hydrolytic enzymes that are there help in getting rid of it. They digest it, right? Which is why the correct answer here is option A. Yes? So very simple and easy. All right. Now moving on to the next one. Exactly, Harsh. Very good, very good. Yes, Advika. Yes, I have taken your name, but please don't spam, uh, spam on the chat. It's okay, NSK, if you have a problem, just let me know so that I can help you out with it, right? Yes, Kashish. Now moving on to question number 19, right? Question number 19. Again, you have an assertion reason. Assertion A says that muscular tissues are made up of elongated cells called as muscle fiber that have the ability to contract and relax. Reason being that muscle cells are found in the inner lining of the elementary canal and blood vessels. Very easy, everybody. Very easy question. By now... I am sure assertion reason has become, you know, something that you will be able to, you know, answer at like at the tip of your fingers, right? All right, I can see a lot of the answers coming my way. Well done, all of you. Well done. Very easy question. Okay, see, let's go back. I think I'm just going to have it on my phone because I'm not able to see the um, question once again. So let me just, okay. What was the assertion statement? Ma'am did not understand. No problem. Assertion reason says that the muscle cells that are there, right? So we see that the muscle cells that are there are made up of elongated cells, right? So we see that they are made up of elongated cells, which we often call as muscle fibers. Now who told me and who's wondering that ma'am this statement is false? Who said assertion is false? The statement is true, right? Muscle fibers, normally they are all made up of elongated cells, right? And we often call them as muscle fibers. Now the reason statement says that they are found in the inner lining of the elementary canal and the blood vessels, right? So we know that, I will not say inner lining, okay? So per se lining of the muscles you can say. A lining that is there, it, it has your, um, what do you say, the lining of the muscles, I mean, lining of elementary canal and blood vessels have this, right? So both statements are true. But at the same time, is it the explanation? Is R the explanation of A? No, right? R is not the explanation of A. Which is why in this case, the correct answer is option B. So for those of you who got confused, are we clear? Are we clear with this? Yes? Ma'am, biology is tough. What to do? Neil Kamal, we may have to spend some more time, right, in learning it, but it will be easy now. So don't worry, bacha. Ma'am, it is clear. Okay. Now moving on to the last assertion reason question. Yes? Question number 20, after which we will have the leaderboard. No problem, Advika. Please don't say sorry. Don't feel bad. Don't, nobody feel bad, okay? Like I always tell you, this is a class where we're all able to help each other out, right? And I always tell you that in this class, I don't not only teach you biology, I also tell you that there are a few things as students, especially in a social community that we need to keep in mind, which is why what I also teach you about, okay? That's also something that I teach you extra. So now moving on to question number 20. Last question. 
Thank you, ego flash, but please don't spam. Okay. Assertion A says that some substances like carbon dioxide or oxygen can move across the cell membrane by a process called diffusion. Reason being that they move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Right? Very simple and easy. So for those of you who struggle with animal tissues and tissues as a chapter, please make sure that you go ahead, make mind maps because that will definitely help you remember. And with diagrams and with most concepts in biology, especially at your level, you need a lot of active recall. Lot of revising and recalling is necessary. Okay? Very, very important. Ma'am, I did not understand this question. Okay. It's okay, go ahead and make an attempt and I'll explain this question. Very good everybody. Like nonetheless, I saw that a lot of you have got the answer correctly. So what did it say? It said that carbon dioxide and oxygen, right? We see that they move across a membrane, right? So we see that exchange of gases can take place by the process of diffusion. Why or how does that happen? By because as we know diffusion is nothing but the movement of substances from a region of its higher concentration to a region of its lower concentration, right? So in this case, what do we see? We see that the correct answer is option A, which says that both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation for A. So with this, of course, if you see, right? And I want all of you to tell me, how many of you feel like ma'am, when I started with question number 11, and I reached question number 20. My confidence to solve assertion reason has improved. How many of you feel this way? I don't want it to be 10 out of 10. How much would you rate yourself out of 10? I don't want it to be 10 out of 10. But if it was 2 out of 10 and it has now become 5 out of 10, I consider that amazing, right? I, it is not that overnight and with one quiz you will become better. It is just that from here is how you start, right? You take steps towards this. And once you are in, you know, as we go ahead, as we go more and more, right? As we go above, your confidence will also increase. See, it's not the perfect explanation, right? So some of you are asking me, ma'am, how exactly can it be the perfect reasoning? See, in this case, when you think about it, the question is, why? Why is it that it is happening? Why is carbon dioxide and oxygen diffusing across the cell membrane? Why is that happening? Because of the concentration difference, right? It goes from higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. And Savita, please don't say, you know, don't uh, get upset because I would have missed your message, right? Because uh, the chat is moving pretty fast, but I hope that now you are clear. And for those of you who are feeling, ma'am, I'm not doing so well, Navneet and everybody out there. It's okay. More and more practice will definitely help you out, right? Amazing. Very good, everybody. Very good. So with this, of course, we're going to have a quick look at the leaderboard. Okay, let's have a look at the leaderboard. Okay, I can see Himanshi is still on top and followed by Chimi, Raj, Prachi, Srishti, Anjali, Jovel, Anish, Hello and Sargun. So well done all of you, well done and in about one hour we wrapped up around 20 questions. So easily in the next one and a half hours we will be able to wind up the rest of the questions as well, right? So how many of you are excited? How many of you are feeling like ma'am this is definitely helping me out and I think by the end of this I'm going to, ex you know, I'm going to to help I'm definitely going to ace my biology exams how many of you are feeling this yes I need the Josh to be very high on the chat right okay very good everybody very good what happened to all of you are like mom why what happened who is this all right okay so well done everybody, well done. Now don't get disheartened if you've got some questions wrong because like I always tell you, this is how you learn, right? So don't worry about it. So now of course, before I go ahead, quickly having a check on the likes, I can see 236 odd live watching and I think we can go ahead and get around 250 likes. So quickly everybody hit the like button on this video and if you enjoy this particular class, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well because nowhere else, like I tell you, right? And I mean this, nowhere else will you find some amazing questions like this. Okay. So now, of course, the next set of questions that is there, right? The next set of questions in round three is going to be a match the following. 
So round three will entirely be match the following questions. And in match the following, we tend to make a lot of silly mistakes, which is why we are going to go ahead. Now, in this case, what I also need you to do is to have a notebook and pen ready with you so that you can write down the answers rather than doing it memorized, right? So that's something that we tend to do often, which is why I would recommend that you have the, no you know, your notebooks and pens with you. Okay. All right. So Akshat, as per official NCRT, diversity is not there, which is why we are not taking it at this point. So with this, of course, everyone, we are going to move on to question number 21. Okay. So are we ready? Are we all ready? That is amazing. Well done, all of you. Well done. Navneet, I would not say you should celebrate on you're getting wrong answers, but don't get disheartened, bacha, that some answers went wrong. Just look at the bright side and let's work on, you know, getting the answer. Let's figure out where we made the mistake so that we don't, you know, you, we understand that, oh, this is where I made the mistake and you don't repeat that, right? Function of diaphragm, it helps in breathing, right? We know that the diaphragm contracts and relaxes and thereby it facilitates in breathing. All right, so question number 21 on your screen. So here, as you can see, you have column one and column two, and then you need to match the following. I will give you some time, right? I'm just going to move out of the screen. You have 60 seconds for this particular question. And take your time and answer, right? Well done, everybody. Well done. No, I just moved out to get some water. That's all, right? All right. So well done, everybody. Very proud that most of you got the answer correctly. Now see, what are the matches? You have smooth endoplasmic reticulum or the SCR, right? Now the primary function of SCR that is there is to mainly help in the production of lipids, right? But we know that in certain vertebrates, it also helps with detoxification. Now, of course, you have lysosomes and we know that lysosomes that is there, of course, helps in the suicide or it acts as the suicide bag, right? So in this case, we see that it because it has the hydrolytic enzymes, it also acts as the suicidal bag. Then you have nucleoid region. Nucleoid region that is there is something we find in prokaryotes like bacteria. And we have food vacuole, which is an amoeba, chromatin material and nucleolus, which is found in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. Which is why if you look at the matches and I go back, the correct answer here is option C. Now, for those of you who may have made some tiny mistakes here and there, this is why I tell you whenever you do match the following, write it down. Don't do ma mental matches and then, you know, tick the answer. Write it down. Even today when I do the match the following, when I normally check the answers or check the menti questions, right? I always write. If you see my table, you'll always see me writing and scribbling everywhere because at the end of the day, that's what helps, right? So there's nothing wrong in writing it and figuring it out, okay? Yes, all right. So now let's move on to the second match the following, all right? So take your time, you have 60 seconds again. So the second match the following is also based on the chapter of cell. Now this is very interesting. Hypotonic, hypotonic, isotonic, extremely sal salty solution. Yes? So what are the matches? Antara, you can use this particular session for your first two chapters, right? Especially for your tissues and cell, you can use this also. This will definitely help you. Very important question. Okay, very, very important question. Now, especially tonicity is something that you should be 100% pakka with. Understanding about concentration of solution. 
Detoxification is removal of toxic substances. Normally, we find it in the liver cells, right? That get rid of toxic unwanted substances. That is what we mean by detoxification. Akshat, kindly stop spamming in the chat, bacha, and stay focused in class, right? Please, please stay focused like I've already answered your question, which is why I request you to stop spamming, okay? So, well done, all of you, well done. Now, what is a hypotonic solution? A hypotonic solution is one wherein if you take a solution and you place a cell, the concentration is such that there is more amount of water content that is there on the outside than on the inside, right? So, which is why in this case, we see that the cell will swell up. While on the other hand, when you talk about hypertonic solution, we know that it is one where if you place the cell, the concentration of solute is more on the outside than within, which is why water will move from inside the cell to outside and as a result, the cell will shrink. Now you have isotonic solution wherein we know that the concentration is the same inside and outside. And finally, you have extremely salty solution where we see that the concentration of solute is so high that the water will move out to such an extent that it, the, you know, all the pr protoplasmic content that is there will shrink extremely resulting in a con uh, constitution or resulting in a condition known as plasmolysis. And in plasmolysis, we see that at the end of the day, we see that all the things would remain in such and there would be a lot of empty space in between. So extreme shrinkage exactly is what we call as plasmolysis. So well done to everybody. Most of you have got the correct answer. And with this, of course, we are going to go on to the next question. That is question number 23. So let's have a question on the screen now. No problem, Harshit. See, for those of you who have made mistakes now, don't get worried because this is how you learn, right? See, I always tell you, whatever mistakes you want to make, you make here so that when you go to your exam, you are more confident, right? Okay. So now again, you have a question which is based on cells. So you have nucleus, nucleolus, nucleoid, chromatin and chromosome. See, extremely salty solution means that there's very little water content in the solution, right? Extremely salty means lots and lots of salt, very little water. And that means that almost all the water content from the cell will move out through exosmosis. And if that is the case, we see that the content will shrink considerably. See, take your time and answer. Nobody is in a hurry to give answers here, right? We all want to take our time and answer. Very good, everyone. Very good. I can see most of you. Not a competition between B and C. I feel like there's going to be one place where you guys are going to make one mistake. I have this strong feeling. But good. Most of you have got the answer correctly. So very proud of it, right? So now in this case, when you talk about nucleus, we know that nucleus is the control center of the cell. While on the other hand, nucleolus that is there is this darkened structure inside the nucleus that is necessary for production of ribosomes. Now you have nucleoid region that is there. And like I said, nucleoid region is found in prokaryotic cells like um, bacteria. Wherein we know that in this case, we find that the genetic material that is there is found concentrated in one region of the cell, right? And in this case, we see that the, the genetic material is not enclosed by a nuclear membrane. Then you have chromatin and chromosome. Now chromatin and chromosome pe hamesha most of them will be you know making a mistake right. So in chromatin we see that they are the thread like structures. While chromosomes that are there are more highly condensed versions where they are rod shaped structures. So I hope now all of you are clear with this. Ayush like I said in the beginning of the class as well there are going to be our friends who may struggle with understanding some of the concepts. So let's be mindful of them and help them also understand. You might know the answer, but just let's wait a minute or two to help them out, okay? So kindly stop spamming. Thank you. Now, of course, with this, we are going to move on to the next question, right? So question number 24 on your screens, yes? So let's have a look. All right. So now again, you have this based on tissues where you have apical, lateral, intercalary and epidermal and on column two, you have the functions which are given. So again, you have 60 seconds for this. Take your time and answer. I'm not going to talk in between so that you 
have your utmost focus on answering, right? I can see some misleading answers coming in the chat. Some of you are misleading your friends. Don't mislead your friends. Well done all of you. Well done. Most of you have got the answer correctly. So when you talk about apical meristem, we know that they are found in the apex, right? So we see that they are found in the apex like the root and shoot tips and they help in the elongation of the root and shoot tips. While on the other hand, when we talk about lateral meristem, lateral means on the sides, right? So we find them on the sides and they are mainly there to increase the girth of the stem. While on the other hand, when you talk about intercalary, where do we find intercalary? We find them at the base of the leaves at the internodal region. So here they mainly help in the elongation at the internodal region. And lastly, you have epidermal tissue or the epidermis, which mainly helps in protection of the, it's a protective kind of tissue. And of course, helps in protection against water loss, right? So the correct answer is option A. Some of you got confused, but I hope now you are clear. Now let's move on to question number five, right? Let's have a look at question number five. So let's see what, does, I mean, question number 25, I was saying question number five, but question number 25, we are midway through the quiz, yes? So now you have it again on all your epithelial tissue and now you have to match it with the location. So yes, everybody, as you match, I'm also going to match it on the side, right? I'll quickly match it on the side. So you can also match it. So as you solve, I am also solving it with you. Yes, the admit card has been released. Kriti ma'am has already updated it on the uh, channel as well. The uh, admit card is released. See, I have already solved it. I hope all of you have solved it with me as well. Ma'am, does weeds dominate plants for growth? Weeds compete with plants for growth, right? So when the weeds are, they're basically like a competition for the crops, which is why they're not very ideal to be grown and we need to get rid of them. Yes. Brigendra, don't spam in class. Please have this conversation elsewhere, okay? So well done, all of you. Well done. So most of you have got the correct answer. Some of you have made some mistakes here and there, okay? Now, when you talk about simple squamous, we know that simple squamous epithelium that is there is found on the inner linings of the blood vessels. We find them in the inner linings of the alveoli, right? And even, of course, we find it, um, you know, we find it on the, um, what do you say, in the inner linings of the stomach as well, right? I mean, the elementary canal that is there. Now, on the other hand, when you talk about cuboidal epithelium, we find it in the kidney tubules, right? And we know that glandular epithelium is mainly a specialized kind of it, which um, glandular epithelium is a specialized kind of epithelium that enables secretion. You have columnar epithelium which is found in the inner linings of the small intestine and you have stratified squamous that means stacks of squamous that is there which is found on the upper layers of the skin which is why the correct answer is option D. So now with this of course I hope all of you are clear and let's move on to question number 26. Now for those of you who are asking me how to match so quickly Read and match. Write it down. See, I have my pen with me and I'm actually solving it side by side along with you. Okay. Yes, love you too, Bacha. Now, I hope you're loving biology also. <laughs> yes. So now let's move on. I 
I think there is one option that you may get confused with. There is one option that can be tricky. Well done all of you, well done. See I told you there is one place. Some of you marked option number B. B is A3, B3, C5. There are two, three options. That is in itself incorrect, right? So that's something that you need to know. So basically what you need to do is do elimination method, okay? First and foremost, you know what parenchyma does, right? Parenchyma serves as a food storage. Your A is 3 that you know pakka. A being 3, of course you have it in three options, but it will eliminate your option B. Now next one, what is it? It says colon kaima, sclerin kaima pe, there was confusion because you don't know what exactly. Now see, colon kaima that is there provides mechanical support to stems, right? And we know that they also provide the flexibility. Now here they are specific to stems, which is why we know it's colon kaima. But on the other hand, sclerin kaima that is there is found in different parts that provides mechanical support and hardness. So that is your key to differentiating between colon kaima and sclerin kaima. Then you have xylem and phloem which is very easy, right? Xylem is of course a complex permanent tissue that helps in conduction of water and minerals. Phloem that is there helps in transport of food. So with this of course at the end of the day it becomes very simple and easy. Now for those of you struggling with video quality, go to settings and improve it, right? So very simple and easy. So now moving on to question number 27 on your screens now. Krishna, I will answer your question, Bacha. Let me finish off with this round and then I will go ahead, right? Okay. Now you have Katla, Rohu, Mrigal, fish farming. See, this is on composite fish culture, okay? Where do they come? You have top feeders, middle feeders, bottom feeders. This is the example which is given. And in the end, you have fish farming, right? So this should be very simple and easy. Take your time, match this question. You cannot remove... <coughs> you cannot remove any hormone of nervousness, but you can always calm yourself down, Tanish. But I would request that you don't spam also, right? So please don't spam on the chat. But I would say that calm yourself down, take lots of deep breaths. Don't get nervous. A lot of you get nervous most often than not. One thing goes a little haywire, you all are getting nervous. Ma'am, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I know the answer. One mistake happens and you're all getting very frustrated. Don't be. You all have the strength to overcome everything, right? Yes, all right. So now, of course, this is very simple. What is fish farming? Fish farming is nothing but it's another name that you give, right? Wherein you're growing fishes at a large scale. And we know that one kind of fish farming is culture fishery. Now when you talk about, right? So in, when you talk about it, we see that catla that is there is a surface feeder, right? You have rohu which is a middle feeder, mrigal which is a bottom feeder. And we see that composite fish culture is practiced so that there is no competition for food and large amounts of different species of fishes can be grown in the same, right? So in this case, this is why we see that option uh, B, right? I, I mean, option A is the correct answer. So I hope now all of you are clear with this. Now moving on to question number 28 very quickly, right? Very simple questions are there, man. So following is very easy. So question number 28. So now you have again based on improvement where you have micronutrient, carif crop, rabi crop and you have apis mellifera. Apis mellifera should be in, you know, um, italics but let's be kind about this and let it be. Okay, but ideally it should be in it. Okay. Madhuri, kindly not spam. Hunted FF, which concept is not clear? Can you be uh, specific about it? Can you tell me which exactly is not clear? Yes, Bachas, whatever doubt is there, quickly tell me. This is a very easy one. I'm um, three options.
Okay, I can see that there is a glitch, right? S Q R. Okay, I understand. So technically, all of you who have given me B C D are correct, right? All options are the same, but all of you who marked B C and D, this has been a mental glitch that has happened. So don't worry, guys. All of you have got the correct answer, right? All three options were the same. So. i think there has been some glitch in the uh, menti quiz but of course as you all know right we know micronutrient that is there is molybdenum we know carif crop here is soya bean rabi is wheat and apis mellifera is q so all of you who got those three you are all correct i'm really sorry there has been a glitch in the quiz i'm not sure what exactly happened but it's okay we're using a third party platform right so i hope it's a little uh, tricky to do that Yes I'm so very very sorry about it guys I know a lot of you must be very upset about it sorry for the glitch yes ma'am please change what to do about our position I know it affects your position per se but like I said it's a third party platform for which I can't really control how it happens right so it's okay right let's not be cruel about it let's not feel too bad about it don't worry about it right so let's get let's look at it on the bright side that all of you got the answer correctly all right So now, of course, I can see a lot of questions are coming saying, "Ma'am, bio is tough, right?" I I saw a lot of them saying, "Ma'am, I don't know, right? I'm not able to show. Um, I don't know how to go about studying biology." For those of you who are not sure of your finding biology very tough, first and foremost, go through all the one-shot videos where we have done dealt with the concepts very deep in detail. So for any chapter, any subject that you find tough, first thing you need to strengthen is your conceptual clarity. And once your conceptual clarity is clear, then you don't have anything to worry about. right so like i always say yes always learn from your mistakes and don't get disheartened and yes i will tell my team to change it as well so don't worry about it ma'am is it a reason for weeds affecting see again like krishna like i said i thought i would answer your question towards the end why is it that weeds are not recommended to be grown along with a normal crop now crops are grown for commercial benefit which means that their harvest their yield is of utmost importance now let's say that if if at all crops are not grown or there are weeds which are competing with the crops sometimes a weed might take up more nutrients than what are necessary for the crop so the crop needs to be of a certain height it needs to be you know having certain amount of nutrients because that's why we you know that's why we're eating the food right normally we check for the nutritional value and we always want highly nutritious food but if a crop does not have it just because we are allowing some undesirable plants to grow then we know that that's not ideal which is why we need to get rid of it right okay jo will i understand completely bachcha we'll try to change it from our end but it's a technical issue for which i don't have control right for what i have control i always tell you that i will take care of it but for things i don't have control bachcha what will i do right so please don't get disheartened it's a glitch that happened please take it in the right way please don't be sad right all of you please don't be sad about this now moving on to question number 29 Are we all ready? Are we all excited? Yes, Aryan, it's okay, but you have to study. You know, you have to study science. You can't say, "Ma'am, bio is not bad. I can't study bio." So in this case, of course, everybody, it's okay. All right, let's move on to question number twenty-nine. Okay, let's have a look. Again, you have parent kaima, photosynthesis, air and kaima, colon kaima, and permanent tissue. And of course, as you see, we have five options that you need to match. So, everybody, quickly. Yes, everybody. Exactly, ma'am. Gaib ho gayi. Nee, nee. Ma'am has gone to drink pani. It's okay, guys. See, don't get worried, right? I know a lot of you. You guys, you're very passionate about these quizzes. You love being a part of these quizzes, and I know, right? That's why all of you that are, I get very passionate when the answer is wrong or something like that. But it's okay, right? 
So now, of course, when you talk about parenchyma, that is there. We know that parenchyma are thin-walled packaging cells. We know that in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is used, or carbon di, what do you say, uh, carbon fixation happens. Parenchyma is a specialized kind of parenchyma which helps in buoyancy. You have colenchyma which have localized or irregular thickenings. Then you have permanent tissue, which is an example that is clearenchyma. And yes, purnima, we shall definitely do that as well. So the matches are confusing, which is why I always tell you to write. Write this down it is super important so now of course let's go on to the last question of match the following I'm sure all of you are like mama re ho gaya so much match the following right so last one we shall do and we will move on to the next round right so let's have a look you have five six options and this is all on connective tissue and this again is an exemplar question so fluid connective tissue, filling of spaces inside the organs, striated muscles, adipose tissue, surface of joints. Okay, there has been another glitch here because it says option 1, 2 and 3 but the options are not uploaded. So in this case, all of you just go ahead and mark. We've had another glitch in uh, match the following as well. But you can give me the matches. I know you are all very upset about this and I sure, I'm sure all of you will say ma'am. There are no options. There has been a glitch. It has not been uploaded. So basically what has happened is that there has been one more image with the options which has not been uploaded. Now Tukai... Yes, I would say go ahead and give it, right? So I'm very sorry. There has been another glitch that has taken place. It's okay. None of the options are coming. It's okay. It's all right. Let this question be. This is not on us, right? So Menti is in its own dhun today doing whatever it feels like. So let it be, but all of you have given me the match. That is what I'm more happy about, right? So as you know, Menti is in its own josh today doing whatever it feels like. But in this case, if you look at it, fluid connective tissue is blood. Filling of the space inside the organs is areolar tissue. Striated muscle that is there is skeletal muscle. Adipose tissue that is there is subcutaneous layer. Surface of joints is of course nothing but we find cartilage. And tendons of course connects bone to muscle, right? Yes, I am not, this is not intentional, right? So in this case, as you all know, it's Menti is out of control today, right? Let's hope Menti does not do this again. For two questions, we faced a trouble. But I'm hopefully strong that for the remaining questions, it will not be there, right? So what is subcutaneous? Subcutaneous means it is found beneath the skin, right? Yes, Menti is out of control. But let's be understanding that we know Menti is a technical platform, right? Okay, Amna, like I said, kindly be mindful and nice. Please don't get agitated per se, like I told you, right? It's a platform glitch. If, if I thought if it was intentional, why would I do that, right? It's a platform glitch that's happening. It is completely unintentional. So guys, let's be optimistic and have a look at the leaderboard, okay? Subcutaneous means, bacha, it is under. That means it's beneath the skin, right? So that is what we mean by it. Okay, so with this, of course, we see that there has been quite a bit of change. I can see Raj, Himanshi, Ami, who's been the fastest. Hello, Shrishti, Abhijit, Prash, uh, Prachi, Anvi, Jasnur, and Anya. So well done, all of you. Well done. Very proud of all of you. Yes, and see, so far, I know for this particular round, we did face some questions, right? I mean, we faced some glitches. But all of you out there, you tell me. Round 1 and 2, you had any glitch? Was there any problem with round 1 and 2? No, right? Round 3, pay some glitch had happened. So it was okay. So now what we will do is let's... We'll be hopeful that round 4 and 5 may there will be no glitches, right? So let's be hopeful. Let's be positive. Let's not have some negativity spread. And with this, of course, we will move on to the round 4, right? So round 4 may... Yes, somebody's like, ma'am, CBSC paper should be like this. That means all questions are very easy. So basically, as you all know, right, in round four, what we are going to do is we are going to be looking at some higher order questions, right? So we are going to be looking at higher order thinking questions, yes? So in this case, we will be doing more of application based, yes? 
we are going to be doing competency based questions in this and CBSC focuses on these kind of questions of late right so these are going to be slightly tricky questions which also means that all of you need to pay attention right so this is not going to be easy but at the same time it will be easy also like I have to be honest I've seen the questions it's going to be easy one okay Sebaceous is nothing but sebaceous glands, okay? Sebaceous are the oil glands of our body. Subcutaneous means it is under the skin, right? So basically, cutaneous refers to skin layer. Subcutaneous is beneath the skin layer. Hormonal stimulation, that is there basically in the case of fishes, right? Normally, hormonal supplements or certain supplements are given to in order to stimulate the hormones, all right? Ma'am, are glandular uh, epithelium unicellular cells See, glandular epithelium is made up of many cells, right? But together it's a tissue. That means it's made up of multi-cells, right? Okay. For all of you having social exam tomorrow, all the very best. I hope that you are going to kill it. I hope you do very well in it. Moving on. So, now like I told you, this is competency based. So, first I have to give you the question. Okay, so the question will appear. This is your question. I hope all of you can see this. Alright. So, Sanya has, now for those of you who cannot see, I am reading it out for you. Are you all able to see this on your mentee screen? Can you give me a thumbs up? Are you able to see the question on the mentee screen? Yes or no in the chat? Okay. Uh, Jaya, I am not able to. Can you give me a context of what is that so that I will be able to answer? No, ma'am, I am not able to see. Some of you are saying, ma'am, no. Okay, for those of you who are saying no, put it on landscape and see. I think you're holding it on portrait. Look at it on landscape and you try to have a look if you are able to see it. Now, in, don't worry. It's not like your timer has started, okay? I'll just explain the question to you anyways, okay? So now, of course, as you all know, right? So this is an experiment that is there wherein if you see, Sanya has conducted an experiment to know how plant cells lose or gain water through osmosis, right? So now here she cuts out 5 centimeters of long potato strips and she puts 3 potato strips in the following beakers, okay? So what has Sanya done? If you are not able to see on, options will come, this is just the question. I have not started your options, okay? This is just, this is not the question, this is the, the uh, what do you say, the setting to the question, so you have three beakers. Okay, those of you who can't see on Menti, observe it in YouTube. So you have three of it which says I think what A, 1, 2 and 3, right? So you have beaker 1, beaker 2 and beaker 3. Alright? So now in beaker 1 you have water. In beaker 2 you have 1% of salt solution, right? And in beaker 3 you have 2% of salt solution, okay? Now she kept potato strips in each of it and she left all of it for 5 hours, alright? So she left all of this for 5 hours. Now after doing that she tabulated her data. Now each potato is about 5 centimeters, right? So what she observed in beaker 1, she saw that initially it was 5 centimeters and most of the potatoes, right? We see that uh, after a few hours, it has either become 5.3 or 5.2 centimeters. So it has become 0.2, right? Second one pay, the 5 centimeter one that was there is still remaining around 4.9 to 5 centimeters. It is remaining as it is. Now the third one that is there, which was kept in beaker 3, was 5 centimeters and now it became 4.8 or 4.7. So this is what is given to you. This is the data that is given to you. So shall I show you the question now? Shall I show you the question? Yes? This is the context. Now based on this, you will get a question. This is what you mean by competency. Okay? That's why I'm telling you, I'm explaining the question to you. Yes? Okay. Now I'm going to show you the question. I hope all of you are ready. I've explained the question to you also. Now, based on this, based on this, you will get question number 31. All right. So everybody be ready for question number 31. But I don't know what to do. I will tell you what to do. Question will come and you will know what to do. Okay. So question number 31, pay, you will be able to see. Yes. The question is, what can Sonia conclude from her, I mean, Sanya conclude from her experiment? You have four options from which you need to identify the question. So this is your question. They have given you some context settings saying Sanya did some experiment and all that. Based on that, you need to answer this, right? So you have beaker one with water, 
बीकर टू विथ वन परसेंट सॉल्ट बीकर थ्री विथ टू परसेंट सॉल्ट वॉटर पे वी सॉ दैट फाइव सेंटीमीटर बिकेम फाइव पॉइंट टू दिस रिमेन्ड एज इट इज एंड इन दिस वी सॉ दैट फाइव सेंटीमीटर बिकेम सम फोर पॉइंट एट दिस इज योर ऑब्जर्वेशन फ्रॉम द क्वेश्चन आई एम टेलिंग यू दी क्वेश्चन इज वेरी इजी इट्स नॉट वेरी ट्रिकी वेरी इजी गाइज वेरी इजी Most of you have got the answer correctly, right? Ruhani, stay focused in class. Don't have other conversation, right? How to answer this question? So first thing, when I explain the question to you, right? What did I do? I broke down the information, right? I broke down the information and I told you that potato strips of five centimeters are kept in three beakers. Okay. Then what did I see? I saw what each beaker has. One has water. One has one percent salt. One has two percent salt. Then I saw the table. Table me what was given? They just showed me difference, right? They just told me that five centimeters was there. Five became five point two. Another one was telling me five became five only. Another one told me five became four point eight. All right, that means that osmosis is taking place, right? In all the cases, we see that there is osmosis which is happening. Now, in this case, if you think about it, salt molecules from cell move out. Osmosis pe salt molecules will move. No, right? Or salt does not move in osmosis. Solute molecules don't move, so it is not correct. Cells gain water through osmosis when kept in salt solution. so the indirectly they're saying if i take a cell and i keep it in a hypertonic solution they have just asked you in easy words hypertonic solution me if i keep it will it gain water no right very good ayan it will not gain water right so this is wrong cell when it when it is kept in salt solution will first gain and then lose water is this correct will first water enter into the cell and then leave out will that happen is that what's going to happen guys like i told you if this question comes in your exam you will regret the fact that you did not pay attention today and if you are feeling distracted i would recommend that you don't disturb the others okay there are a lot of people who want to study today exactly so this is wrong also at the end of the day what is it water molecules move out of the cell um uh, cell based on the amount of salt solution so basically right so basically if you think about it when it is kept in a hypertonic solution water will move out right yes okay so now of course i hope all of you are clear with this bachchas please stop spamming in the chat are we clear are we all clear with this or are we still very confused about what is the question yes now for those of you who are spamming let me tell you you are going to get blocked your accounts are going to get blocked if that is the case you can continue spamming okay but if you want to study i would say that pay attention thoda bahut clear hai okay everybody is like ma'am okay most of you are saying fine manan is telling no see i'll explain this question once more for everybody who is confused now what was given to you it was given that there are three beakers right so if you think about it there are three beakers okay now you have beaker 1 pay water you have beaker 2 pay 1% of salt solution right and in beaker 3 you have 2% of salt solution now in each of it you have kept the same potato strip which is of 5 cm now what they have done they have left this for 5 hours okay they have left it as it is now after this what do they observe they saw that in beaker 1 they saw that 5 cm that was there the potato had become longer and it became 5.2 cm so that means that water has elongated while on the other hand 2 pay 5 cm that was there remained more or less as 5 right and 3 pay what happened 5 became maybe 4.8 now why is all this happening because at the end of the day there is osmosis right osmosis that is there right it is basically happening why osmosis is happening and in osmosis what happens in osmosis we see that there is movement of water molecules not salt molecules 
and we know that specifically here we are talking about a hypertonic solution. So hypertonic solution may what is there? We see that there is more salt and less water, right? So your one percent, two percent are all hyper there. Especially your two percent here is a hypertonic solution. And in this case, we see that in hypertonic solution, water will move out of the cell because there is less water outside and more water inside the cell. So water will move out and the cell will shrink. That's why the size from five centimeter has become four point eight, right? So water will move out based on the amount of salt. But here we know that it's not like because water will gain when kept in, water will not enter into the cell when in hypertonic, right? And neither will water enter and then exit, which is why in this case we see that the correct answer is option D. So are we all clear, everybody? Are we all clear? Manan, you may not have a doubt, bacha, but there were many other kids who had a doubt. So are we all clear? All right. What is phagocytosis? Phagocytosis is a process by which we see that there is engulfing that takes place. Like in the case of amoeba, they will engulf and they will bring it in. That is what we mean by it. Krishna, I have already explained hormonal simulation. You can check it out. Rewind the video. I have already explained it. Okay. Now moving on to the next one, which is again based on this particular question. Yes. I. It's going to be based on this particular question. So this is question number thirty-two. Yes, on your screens now. Question number 32, everybody. In which beaker was the concentration of water molecules inside and outside the potato cells likely to be the same? So like I said, beaker 1, beaker 2, beaker 3. I am writing the observations once again. So 5 became 5.2 centimeters in beaker 1. 5 became around 5 to 4.9 centimeters. Here 5 became 4.8. This was the size of the potato. So based on this, where is it that concentration of water molecules inside and outside the potato? The same. Very good everybody, very good. Most of you have got the correct answer. The correct answer here is option B, that is beaker 2, right? So this right here is the correct answer. So now of course we are going to move on to the next question. But before I move on to the next question, I want you to quickly have a look, okay? So here as you can see, you have a diagram which is given to you. Okay, let me just move this. So you have a diagram which is given to you which shows the cropping harvesting pattern which is followed by a farmer, right? So here as you can see, I think the diagram is not very clear which is why I'm going to write it down. This says year 1, this says year 2 and this says year 3, okay? So year 1 may what they are saying is you have bed 1, okay, bed 2 and you have bed 3, okay? You have 3 beds. So basically if I were to show it to you, it would mean that there would be like three beds essay, right? So there are three beds. Now what they're saying, they're saying that, just give me a moment. So in bed one, they first put tomato, then in your bed two, they put bean, and in bed three, they put carrot. Now in the second year, what did they do? Second year, they put carrot here, they put tomato, and they put bean. And third year, they put bean, then they put carrot and then they put tomato, right? So this is what the question is telling us, right? What is the question telling us? Question is telling us that there are three beds in a land and they are growing tomato, bean and carrot in an alternating manner, okay? So this is the question. Are we all clear with the question? Yes? Are we all clear with this particular question? Yes? Give me a thumbs up on the chat very quickly. If you are clear with it, give me a thumbs up. Once more, three beds are there. You have three plants which are being grown. That is tomato, beans and carrot, right? And we know that across the years, they have been growing alternatively. So based on this, you are going to be getting the question, right? So question number 33. So let's have a look. What is question number 33? Okay. 
what is the common term which is used for this particular pattern of crop harvesting so is it crop rotation is it intercropping mixed cropping or organic farming so you have three crops and that too in between you have beans which is a leguminous crop right and you see that they are being grown alternatively across the years right so that is what we mean by it jitender whatever doubts you have i'll take it after this question okay very good everybody very good so as you know in this particular case it is crop rotation it is not crop intercropping see if it was intercropping i'll tell you what it would be it would be in this manner right so they would show that in alternative rows they would use terms like simultaneous right so they would have used those kind of terminologies but here across years you have leguminous plants and they are being grown in an alternative manner right which is why if it is being grown alternatively it is crop rotation so i hope all of you are able to understand this now for those of you who want an explanation one last time so basically they said that you have year 1 year 2 and year 3 and they said that there is bed 1 bed 2 bed 3 nothing but the different parts of the land right so here we see that you have different beds and what did they do so imagine if this is my each piece of land right imagine these were each piece of land so in my first year i grew only tomato here i grew carrot here and i grew beans here but next time in that bed one where i earlier grew tomato in my next year i decided to grow beans and where i used carrot i grew tomato and wherever i grew beans i grew carrot there now in the third year what did i do i grew tomato and beans now i'll grow carrot here now i grew carrot and tomato i'll grow beans here i grew these two i'll do this so basically what am i doing i am alternating here right so that is what i am doing in if i just take this part of it right so if i were to just take this part in one piece of land i am alternatively growing crops right so that's why the answer here is crop rotation so are we all clear are we all clear with this now for those of you who might be attending my class for the first time you do understand that i mainly teach in english because i'm more comfortable teaching in english right so i hope that at the end of the day you will also write your answer in english as well right so i'm more comfortable teaching in english which is why I, uh, there's no point spamming saying ma'am use hindi okay wherever you absolutely don't understand i'll try my best to teach in hindi but i'm not very fluent in hindi right yes my hindi is very weak thank you <laughs> This video mainly is for CBSE students. I am from Bangalore. Okay, so now moving on to the next one, which is again based on this particular question only. So it's based on crop rotation. All right. So based on this, let's have a look at question number thirty-four. Okay, what is the advantage of using crop rotation? Basically, right? What is the advantage of using it? What is the advantage of practicing crop rotation? crops are resistant to diseases the harvesting time of crops are reduced less amount of water is required or different nutrients present in the soil are evenly used right oh that's amazing neeta i hope you find this class helpful right very good all of you very good and well done the correct answer here is option d that different nutrients present in the soil are used evenly and that's why normally in crop rotation also we use leguminous plants because at the end of the day the leguminous plants that are there they enrich the soil with nitrogen right which is why in this case we see that the correct answer here is option d 
Now we are going to move on to the next one which is going to be based on composite fish farming. We have already discussed this, right? So they are saying that composite fish culture is a process of growing different crops or di I mean different types of fishes in the same pot, right? So they are saying here that Katla here are surface dwellers, Rohue are mid-level dwellers and Brigal are bottom level dwellers. So this is something that they have asked us, okay? Very easy question, right? Are we clear with the question? Shall we go ahead? Yes, ma'am, this question is very easy, right? So, shall I go ahead? I'll show you the question. Okay, go to Menti now. So, I'm going to be showing you question number 35, okay? It's going to be based on composite question, I mean composite farming. So, the question here is, which among the following is said to be a likely advantage of composite fish culture? So, you have four options from which you need to identify the correct answer. To be honest, I've already given you the answer for this when I was explaining it earlier. I've already given you the answer. Another half an hour, bacha, that's all. One half an hour. We have only 10 more questions left. So we'll wind it up soon. Jitendar, pseudopodia are false feet of amoeba that helps them in obtaining their food, right? They are false feet that is formed by the projection of the cell membrane and the cytoplasm and they help in movement and capturing of food. Horticulture that is there is basically the farm growing of, you know, mainly you have fruits and vegetables that are there, which is practice is what we call as horticulture. Sample paper we will do soon. Don't worry. Very good everybody, very good. Yes, so the correct answer here is option B, right? So here we see that why is composite culture practiced? Mainly because all areas of the ponds are utilized and if there are different surface dwellers, right? So if you have a top level, middle level and a lower level, lower level feeder or lower level dweller, we see that different species can be grown, right? And at the end of the day, we are also able to utilize and grow more species right not because fish fishes eat less food or fishes grow better when they are together nothing of that sort right so the correct answer here is option b so now let's move on to question number 36 everybody so quickly everyone question number 36 that is there is going to be on your screens now okay alisha prepared a mount of human cheek cells by staining it with methylene blue but she did not see ribosomes in the cell this is because of what Human cheek cells don't have ribosomes. They are too small to be observed under a compound microscope. Ribosomes do not get stained by methylene blue or because microscopes did, was not focused correctly. Now there are two options for which I feel like you can get confused. So take your time everybody to answer this question. Very interesting answer. I can see most of you, ma'am, gayab nahi ho gaya, I just came back. Most of you got confused here, right? So in this case, what are ribosomes? Ribosomes are extremely tiny structures, okay? Now when you take a human cheek cell, alright, let's assume that this is a human cheek cell and you observe it under the microscope. What are the structures you can see? You can see cell membrane, right? You can maybe observe the cytoplasm that is there. Yes. And you will be able to see nucleus. Now at the same time, right, if you think about it, will you be able to see the granules which are there in the cytoplasm, right? Or will you be able to see maybe mitochondria or anything else? Are you able to see it under a compound microscope? Are you able to observe those organelles? No, right? So size wise, they're pretty small to be observed under the microscope, right? So mainly, even though methylene blue is being used, why is it that we're not able to observe? Size wise, the ribosome that is there is very small. It cannot be observed using a compound microscope, right? Which is why the correct answer here is option B. So are we all clear? I'll give you some tips and tricks for biology exam also. Don't worry. Because at the end of the day, when you look at the ribosomes, they are tiny structures which are found either free floating or on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. Which is why in this case, we see that the correct answer here is option B. So now, of course, let's move on to the next question. Question number 37, everyone. 
Yes, chat is very misleading. I told you. See, in the beginning only I told all of you. But pay attention. Okay. After observing, uh, alright. After observing two freshly prepared temporary mounds under the microscope, the following observations were made. Rectangular cells, irregularly shaped flat cells, present of large vacuoles and presence of a single wall. Now, if one slide was said to be an onion peel, what would we observe? Yes, you have four options from which you need to identify the correct answer. Very good question. Very easy. Onion peel. See, in animal cells, nucleus is large, but in plant cells, you could say sometimes, you know, you have bigger vacuoles. So, it depends on which cell you take, right? Yes, Sai Hitesh, we shall do that. Don't worry, okay? All right. See, if it is onion peel, for those of you who mark two and three, what is option number two? It's an irregularly flattened cells. Irregularly flattened cell is not, it is not in plant cells, right? Normally, plant cells are either oval or in the case of, uh, you know, in the case of onion cells, we know that they are long and rectangular, right? So option number one was rectangular cells. Then it also said that they observed vacuoles. Now, of course, to go deeper, we know that plant cells have vacuoles. So this is the correct answer. But if it is single wall, that means that only we find cell membrane. But in plant cells and in onion cells and all, if you see, right, you will find one thick layer like this, which goes on to suggest about cell wall. Bha uh, Bhavna, I'll help you out with that as well. We'll quickly get winding. We'll wind up with this and then we'll move on. Okay. Yes. So are we all clear for those of you who made all these mistakes? Are we clear? Yes. Are we all clear everyone? Okay. Very good everybody. Very good. Now moving on to question number 38. All right. Question number 38 on your screens now. Yes? All right. Seema was asked to identify a tissue on a given slide. Now the cells that was there on the slide was long. It was cylindrical. Okay. It was striated, unbranched and multinucleated. Right? Which among the following is it? So easy. This question is super duper easy. Right? See for 11th biology, you need to put a lot of effort. Okay? Because 11th biology is extremely in detail. So first and foremost, your fundamentals need to be strong. And you need to go beyond your textbook also to make sure that your basics are strong. Right? So put in a lot of time to learn. Okay? Ma'am, option is not option. Hai. Very good everybody. The correct answer here is exactly the option. The answer is there in the option itself. The correct answer is striated muscles. But because cardiac muscles were there and we know cardiac muscles can be striated. They have also told us that it is unbranched. But cardiac muscles we know is branched and it is uninucleate. While on the other hand the skeletal muscles that are there are unbranched and multinucleate, right? So now I hope all of you are clear with this particular question. Now moving on to the next question that is question number 39, right? Thank you Mithun, thank you so much. Everybody question number 39 on your screens now. Which observation noted by Rohit about parenchyma is incorrect? Everybody read this. When is it incorrect? I mean, what is incorrect about parenchyma? All the best, art and craft with thee for your science exam. Hope you do well. Yes, everybody, we're talking about statements which are incorrect about parenchyma, right? Very good. 
So when we talk about parenchyma cells, right, we know that parenchyma cells are living cells, right, and we know that they have a thin cell wall, right, they don't have thick cell wall, right, we know that they are large cells which are placed together and they have intercellular spaces and we see that they do not have thickened corners. So in this case, we see that the incorrect option here is option D. So very easy question, right? So basically inference based questions that we are tackling here. Now moving on to question number 40, last uh, 40th question after which we have just 10 more. Select the incorrect sentence. Okay, let's have a look. You have four questions from which you need to identify the incorrect ones. Blood has matrix containing protein, salt and hormones. Two bones are connected with a ligament. Tendons are non-fibrous and fragile and cartilage form uh, is a form of connective tissue. So this right here, that is there, right? This is from exemplar as well. Chances of this kind of question coming is very high. So stay focused, right? Use elimination method if need be. You can use elimination method for MCQs as well. Well done everybody, well done. The correct answer is option C. See, they're asking for what is incorrect, right? So blood has matrix. That means we know blood is a connective tissue and connective tissue has matrix in it, right? So it has a fluid matrix that too. And this fluid matrix that is there has proteins, it has salts and it has hormones. While on the other hand, that is there, if you see, we have two bones which is connected by ligament. So we know that ligament that is there, I always tell you BLB, that means ligament connects two bones, right? So this is also correct. Cartilage is a form of connective tissue, of course, it is a form of connective tissue. But tendons that are there, they are actually a type of fibrous. I have mentioned this to you earlier also. It is fibrous connective tissue and they are very strong because what do tendons do? Tendons connects bone to muscle, so it needs to be strong. It cannot be fragile. So the incorrect sentence is option C. So I hope all of you here are clear with this. So now, of course, we are going to have a look at the leaderboard. So like I told you, round three had some glitches, but round four that is there is now good to go, right? We had no glitches whatsoever. So in this case, I can see Himanshi is back on top, followed by Prachi, Shrishti, Jashnur, Hello, Ishita, who is the fastest, Chimi, Apshita, Anjali, and Anya. So well done to all of you. Very proud of all my students who are acing this Menti quiz today. So very good everyone, very good and see mistakes that have happened across the way, you know things that were, you know, made, errors that were made, it's fine, I always tell you, if you don't learn now, if you don't make these mistakes now, then I don't want you making those mistakes in the exam. So make all your mistakes here, we always tell you, this is where you make mistakes, this is also how you learn and revise your concepts. So well done everybody, well done. Now of course before I go ahead. Oh, there's something that's going on with Menti today. I don't know what's happening. But of course, let me tell you all one thing, right? Before I move on to round five, I'll tell you one small thing. So now I do understand that, you know, we play with a third party platform. We use a third party platform that is there. And see, glitches can happen, issues can happen. And sometimes what happens is that because, you know, we're just sending things on the chat. We don't really understand that there are people who are reading it, right? So if you end up sending something hurtful, something that is negative, that normally impacts the effect and the, the whole mahal of the, you know, um, session that is there, right? which is why I always tell you that you always need to spread positivity be kind be understanding of the other person just because maybe you understood something someone else might be struggling with it but as students as my students especially I want you all to be very very accepting of everyone right so try to make sure that you do understand try to reach out a little right and please make sure that at all times you are nice and kind right kindness goes a long way right so today if you may you might tell me also something but at the same time you also need to be kind to me just like how i am kind to you right it goes both ways so i want all of you to be respectful and to be kind yes Will you give me a thumbs up for that? I don't want anything else, okay? Just tell me that as students, as students growing up, you will be good to everybody around you. Yes? Okay. 
See, that's all that I want, right? You are all growing up. You're growing up. You're going to grow up to be wonderful adults. The What you learn today, habits you inculcate today are the habits that will be there for the you know, that's going to be there for the longest time, right? So when you are growing, when you are growing up and you are learning, I want to mold you to be beautiful adults, right? Beautiful at heart. That is what I want, right? So yes, keeping that small thing in mind, right? I'm going to go on to round five, right? So round five that is there is going to be the last round of 10 questions. And here we shall have biology scary set of questions which are the diagram based questions, yes? So all these three that is there is going to be diagram based questions, all right? So last 10 would be entirely based on it. So without wasting any more time, I am going to jump into the last set of questions. Somebody's already like, oh my God, ma'am, khatam ho gaya, this is going to be tough. Some of them are saying, ma'am, it's going to be easy. So then it's amazing. So that's great. I hope you can tell me your name uh, who tells me that ma'am I've become better at science. So thank you so much. All right. So now last nine questions. I need the Josh level to be very high. 15-20 minutes mein toh, we will definitely wind the session up. So let's get started everyone on question number 41. Right. Question number 41 on your screens. So you have a labeling which is given to you. You have neuron which is given to you and you need to identify what is A, B, C and D. Everyone, take your time and write this. I am also labeling this along with you. This is very simple. If you take two minutes, you will get the answer. Exactly. This is so easy. I want all of my students to get the answer correctly. Now, if you are all here with me, you will see how much I have solved questions around me already. Even if I know the answer, I still keep solving it. All right, everybody. No problem. No problem. It's okay. Right? Yes, Emmanuel. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. Very good, everyone. Very good. The correct answer is option D. Now, if you think about it, right, if you look at the diagram that was there, right? So, if you look at the diagram, some of you got confused with option D. I don't know why. See, I think you read B and D differently, okay? Now, what happened was your A marked nucleus, right? So, your A was marked at the nucleus. Your B that was marked was actually pointing towards the myelin sheath that was there. C was pointing towards cytoplasm. D was pointing towards dendrite. I think some of you got confused with B and D here and that's why like you interchanged and you read it. But the correct answer here is option number A. So now moving on to the next one, right? Let's move on to question number 42, all right? So I hope all of you are ready for question number 42. Sagar, I just told you let's spread love, not hate. So let's keep the happiness and positivity going on, right? So let's get going to question number 42. Okay, there were four slides which were given for observation. The correct identification of slides are as follows. Okay, so what is it? You have A, B, C and D. I think you should get this. It should be a very easy question. See, if we remove nucleus from a cell, a cell will not be able to survive for too long, right? So, if you look at a eukaryotic cell, it may not survive. Certain organelles which are autonomous and are not dependent on the nucleus may survive, but in general, the cell may not be able to survive. Lot of misleading answers again coming my way. Yes. Well done everybody, well done. Those of you who gave A as the wrong answer, they were just misleading. But some of you got confused, bachas. First one that was there, right? We see that 
you saw that they were cells and they were green in color right you saw that they were green in color so normally and they had spaces between them so those are your parenchyma cells right so those were your parenchyma now if you think about it parenchyma is the only one that you had to get right now at the same time the second one had a lot of irregularly shaped flattened cells right those are your cheek cells then you had the rectangular cells which were the onion cells and the last one of course had these el el elongated cells which were there which is clear in chyma right so now i hope all of you are clear with this thin walled and intercellular spaces were more exactly so now those of you who are little scared about diagram based questions i am sure all of you would have now you are thinking are ma'am so easy right all these diagram based questions are actually the easiest these are highly scoring questions in your exam if you get diagram based ones please do it because they are highly scoring very simple and easy so moving on to question number 43 right again very easy correct identification of a and b are as follows what is it identification of a and b they have given full twisted they have twisted it they have turned it but i'm sure you will be able to get the answer you have 60 seconds for this question very good everyone so you have a which is elongated this manner but there is a gap or there is a lumen here you have another one which is of this side which has a prominent nucleus and a single nucleus right uninucleate well done everybody well done so this right here is lumen i mean the one with the lumen and of course the thickened walls that are there they are nothing but sclerenchyma and this right here is smooth muscles which are spindle shaped right so we see that they are spindle shaped and of course we see that they are spindle shaped now somebody was asking me ma'am why not involuntary muscle right see involuntary muscle is vague because your cardiac muscles are also involuntary but when you have an option which is more specific to a smooth muscle correct answer here is smooth muscle right so in biology always go for the answer which is more specific rather than which is more vague right so you have an answer which is specific to the structure which is why it is smooth muscles So now let's quickly move on to question number forty-four, right? So question number forty-four, everybody on your screens now. Okay, so here you have an image. I will write on the image so that you can see. On top you have A, B, and C. Okay, so you have this part which is pointing to A, the white part pointing to B, and this particular part. Okay, this white portion here which is pointing to C. Identify A, B, C. I like how you told me that this is right here is the easiest round. I'm so happy to hear that. For those of you who are struggling with video quality, please go to settings and improve the settings. You will be able to see it better, right? So go ahead and do check that out. I think it's definitely going to help you. I can already see the answer, ma'am. This question you've given before. Oh, okay. Physics ki quiz hogi zarur very soon. We'll have it. I think over the weekend we'll have it. Well done, everybody. Well done. So the white part that you saw right there was the bone, right? So A was the bone. Now you had B, which was connecting your bone to the muscle. that is your tendon so b right here was the tendon and then you had c which was connecting two bones together which is what we call as the ligament which is why in this case we see that the correct answer is option b yes vagya hello please bachcha let's stay focused and with that let's move on to question number 45 let's go exactly So Sita kept some plant cells in a certain solution X. Okay, so her plant cells looked like this. 
After five hours, she she saw that it became like this. What solution is X? Is it a hypertonic solution? Is it a hypotonic solution? Is it an isotonic or is it just water? See, I have explained, right? I have explained this so many times that by now all of you in Menti should be able to get the answer, right? When will this change, right? Is NCRT, see NCRT is more than enough for science, right? At all times, especially we see that NCRT is more than enough. So you don't have to worry, but you need to have in-depth understanding of NCRT, right Mustafa? You need to have proper conceptual clarity. So if you feel like there are chapters for which you don't have conceptual clarity, please do check out our one-shot videos. It will definitely help you out, right? Okay. Well done, all of you. Well done. So if you saw in the image, there, were, there was a picture where the cells had some good amount of water and in the when other one, we saw that the cell had shrunk. Now when will cell shrink? Cell will shrink in hypertonic solution. So the correct answer here is option A. So now let's move on to question number 46, everybody. 46 on your screens. So now you have A, B, C for which you need to match with their functions, all right? So you have option A, you have option B and you have option C. Now two things you have to do, identify A, B, C, right? And then match the functions, yes? All of you need to do that. Take your time for this question, no need to hurry with it. I can already see some mistakes coming my way. Lot of misleading answers, lot of misleading answers. Guys, look at what is B and look at what is C. You have not paid attention to the question. Yes. This is A, this is B, this is C. Well done everybody, well done. Yes, now I like how most of you got the answer correctly but some of you still got confused here. What happened? What was A? A was your nucleus, right? Which is your control center. So A right here is the nucleus. Now you have B. Now what was B? Was B SCR or RER? Was B rough endoplasmic reticulum or smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Can you tell me the answer? Was B rough endoplasmic reticulum or smooth endoplasmic reticulum? I can still see a mix of answers. It was rough endoplasmic reticulum, right? It was RER because if you look at the diagram, if you just rewind this video and you see, the diagram had small blue dots on it, okay? Small blue dots. It was rough endoplasmic reticulum. And what does rough endoplasmic reticulum do? It does protein synthesis, right? So that's what it does. Now what are you left with? You are left with C which is SCR and we know that this right here is what is involved in lipid synthesis, right? Which is why in this case the correct answer is option A. Now those of you who went in incorrect, right? Who went incorrect in identifying B and C is who has made the mistake, right? So whenever you see and whenever you have a look at ribo uh, endoplasmic reticulum, look for the ribosomes. If it is there, then you know. If it is not there, then you know what it is as well. So are we all clear with this? Yes. We will be doing it soon, Hitesh. Don't worry, bacha. Don't worry. Now moving on to question number 47. Okay. Identify the cropping pack. Third, okay, I'm going to put an N on screen. Mixed cropping, crop rotation, intercropping, mixed farming. The diagram should be self-sufficient. If I have explained, if I have told you N number of times that there is a keyword for this particular pattern, you will be able to identify and point, put the keyword along with the diagram, right? How many of you were able to identify it like this? You tell me in the chat, ma'am, very easy, right? How many of you felt this way? I can still see some of you are here misleading it, right? Misleading your friends. 
Why guys? Why are you leading your misleading your friends? Students, we should be nice to our friends. No, we should help each other out. Ma'am, if my answer is correct, then it is easy. Okay. <laughs> My name is Aishwarya. I think you're very new to class. So welcome. Yes. So here, what did you observe? Most of you got it right. So very proud of you. Now, what is the difference between mixed cropping and intercropping? Mixed cropping is when you grow two or more crops simultaneously on a same piece of land. But at the same time, when you grow it in a definite pattern, like how you observed, right? Definite rows or in a definite pattern then it is going to be intercropping, right? So in this case, we see that the correct answer here is option D, I mean option C, which is intercropping. So Samurai Killer, what is the, what is the key point? The key point or the key word that you need to look for is growing two or more crops on the same piece of land in a definite pattern is what we understand as intercropping, okay? So now with this, of course, we will move on to question number 48. So that's amazing Deep, that's very amazing that you have the subscription and I'm sure that you must be benefiting a lot from the two teacher advantage, right? So moving on to question number 48, right? Identify the type of hybridization. Okay, I think you'll not be able to see. There is Duncan grapefruit here. Okay, and here you have orange. I'm writing it down because you may not be able to see. And this is Tangelo. Okay, now you need to identify which kind of it it is. Is it intergeneric, intervarietal, interfamily or interspecific hybridization? Yes, okay. I know, for those of you who have been very regular to my class, you will be able to identify this very easily because I have used this example multiple number of times. What is the example? Is it intervarietal? Interspecific. Yes, Chubbs, you can join, but I think I'm almost through the for question number 48. But you can join for the last two questions, not a problem at all. Ma'am, I've written it on screen. I know I have not taught C, so you can just eliminate C. There's nothing called as interfamily. We've not learned about it, so you can eliminate C. I only eliminated C for you. Everybody! What happened? Was it intergeneric? Was it intergeneric or was it interspecific? There is nothing interfamily. Interfamily is just there. See, intergeneric explanation I gave you was the, uh, I gave you the example of cabbage, right? There was an example of cabbage that I gave you for intergeneric. It's not intergeneric when two different genera all together or when the genus, two different genuses are crossed, right? But in this case, it's not intervarietal either. Because in this case, when you see, right, intervarietal explanation, I normally gave you for two varieties of wheat. Right, two varieties of wheat is what we give you an example for intervarietal. So in this case, it is interspecific. Tangelo is an example for interspecific. Very, very important to learn this, right? Yes, this is a little confusing, but it's okay, right? So that is something that is there. Exactly. For those of you who have been very regular, you know that these are only things, these are some common examples I often tend to give. Now for you will be regular in my class and you will know that these are the examples that are there, right? But are we now clear, right? Are we all clear with the difference between intervarietal, interspecific and intergeneric? We are clear, no? Yes, can you give me a quick thumbs up in the chat so that I know that you are good to go? Huh? Ma'am, I'm yet to watch this video. Yes, yes. Go find the one-shot video for this particular chapter. You will be super duper clear after that video. Right? Okay. Amazing. Going on to question number 49, everybody. Question number 49. Oh, ho, you will, may not be able to see. So, have a look at the YouTube video. Okay? See what I'm labeling. This is part number one. This is part number two. This is part number three. And this here is part number four. Have a look at what I have labeled here. Look at YouTube for the labeling to be clear and then give the answer on Menti. Thank you, Sumit. This is confusing, but see, this is your Floemka diagram which has come in, in your textbook only. And you can get this question, okay? Do PYQs repeat all your, your similar questions come in PYQs, all right? 
So we see that similar questions come for PYQs and it is good to go through PYQs. It's going to be very, very important especially. No problem. See, if you made a misclick but you need the answer, it's going to be okay. So Hasra, what happened? All right. Okay. So now, of course, as we know, right, ma'am, this was so hard. No problem, bacha. This was your flow M diagram, right? So when you look at it, this particular part that was there, this was what was labeled as in this case, right? If you think about it, this was what was your sieve cell, right? Or your sieve tube. And then you had this particular part here, which was your sieve plate, which was nothing but part four. So part one that was there was your sieve cell or your sieve tube. Part four that was there was your sieve plate, right? Now, at the same time that is there, we had the companion cell along with it, right? So, you have your companion cell on the side, which was marked as 3. So, this was marked as 3. And at the end of it, we saw that there were other cells which were there. So, we had phloem fibers here. And then you had your phloem parenchyma, which was labeled as 2. So, the correct answer that is there, right? So, 1 was sieve cell or I'll say sieve tube. Two that was there was phloem parenchyma. So I'm just writing parenchyma at this point. Three that was there was your companion cell, right? And four that was there was nothing but the sieve plate. Yes? So are we all clear? Now I think, right, if you think about it, you will be able to click on the image and you'll be able to zoom into it, right? Okay. So now let's move on to the next question and it's the last question. So now, of course, before I show the last question, how many likes do we have on this video, Ranjit? Three, one, five. Guys, very quickly, for those of you who have not hit the like button on this video, quickly go ahead, let's make it 350 likes and then shall we see question number 50. Yes, question number 50 and let's make it 350. Why not? I think we can do this. We got this, right? Okay. All right, everybody. So let's quickly hit the like button. Do we see the likes increasing, Ranjit? Okay. Yes. Uh, sound crash course will come soon. Don't worry about that, Pradeep. It's going to happen. We are close. We are at 344. I feel like we can. No, 350. Though we can definitely hit. Right? Yes. All right. No, no, Tanishka. Don't worry. Right? I'm just going to quickly show it to you. It's just there. All right, everyone. So with that, I'm going to show you question number 50, right? Question number 50 on your screens now. So you have to identify what is A, B and C, right? Identify what is A, B and C. So you have A, B, okay. Very easy. I am sure that you will all be able to. Okay. All right. All right, everyone. So this is a very simple and easy question, right? Tissues, epithelial tissues, very simple. Identify the image and get the answer. Hi, Raj. Hello. See, if you do elimination method only, I'm telling you, you will be able to get the answer. I like how all of you are super confident with this. You're like, I'm so easy, easiest one so far. I, 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 I'm so happy to see that, right? I'm very happy to see that. Well done, everyone. Well done. So if you think about it, right? A, if you look at it, A was stratified. And you know that in stratified, there are multiple layers, right? So when there are multiple layers, you get to know that this right here is strata. And if you get stratified, the rest of your options will go because none of it is ever mentioning that, right? Everyone, other options are saying cuboidal, squamous and everything. So in this case, if you think about it, A is stratified, B is cuboidal and C is squamous. So with this, of course, as you see, right, we did it. We did 50 questions and at the top of the 50 questions or after 50 questions, I can see Himanshi has consistently made it on top. Well done, everyone. 
everyone. Well done and very proud of you, Himanshi. You were consistently on top with 40,879 points. I can see Prachi, Jashnur, Abhijit, Shrishti, Apshita, Chimmy, Aina, Anjali and Ishita on the top 10. Very proud all of you. Very proud. I can see all of you are sharing your ranks with me. 34 and I can see a lot of you have done a wonderful job. So now, of course, you know that at all times, I am super proud of all of you, right? Very, very proud of all of you. So with this, of course, everyone, I come to the end, right? And as you all know, Baiju's 9 and 10 has always got you covered. And congratulations for all of you for making it through. If you were there right from the beginning till the very end, I need you to tell me two things, right? Did you find this particular session helpful, right? Was this session helpful for your complete syllabus revision? If it was helpful, then I want you to go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And another thing that I need you to tell me is what other kind of sessions do you want, right? What other types of sessions, of course, for on an examination front, because I know all of your exams happen differently. So you can tell me, right, what other kind of sessions do you require specific to biology? And let me know in the comments so that we can inform our team as well. So in this, of course, these are two things that I would like you to let me know in the comments below, because it's going to be very, very important for our team as well. And of course, you know that no matter what, Baiju's 9 and 10 has always got you covered. And when we say that we're going to take care of you, we really mean about it, right? So here's a quick homework question. A lot of you are asking me for a homework question. So I want you to quickly tell me the functions of Golgi apparatus in the comments below. So this is your homework as well, right? So what are the functions of the Golgi apparatus? Let me know in the comments below. I will be checking the answers for this as well. I'm very proud of all of you for doing an amazing job in today's quiz. We're going to be having more and more practice so that you ace your exams. And with this, of course, I will be signing out. Hoping to see you all very soon again. Up until then, bye everybody. Lots of love to all of you. Take care and good night.